coming up on this week's travel show. Where in the United Kingdom? A place that attracts almost 40 million visitors a year. More than half of them will head to London. But this week, we're going off the beaten path exploring some of Britain's best kept secrets, now being discovered by travellers. We begin in Northern Ireland, where forgotten places are being visited thanks to a hit television oh, program. Bruce. Yes! Well done, you. <laughs> Before heading to England, where Kat's retracing the footsteps of the men who carved out the Lake District's dramatic landscape. I don't know if my legs are shaking because I'm cold, because I'm nervous. And then we're in Scotland with a man who's on a mission to walk the entire coastline of the UK. We start in Northern Ireland, in County Down, because here, in places once rarely visited, something unexpected is happening. Now, people are coming from across the world. And it's all because of one television program. Game of Thrones, one of the biggest in history. In the fantasy series, of which the eighth and final season concluded this year, different houses battle to claim one ultimate throne. It was here in remote locations south of the busy capital of Belfast that many of the programme's most iconic scenes were filmed. And where some of its cast can still be found. Okay, so I have a confession. I'm a giant Game of Thrones geek. And I'm super excited because this place has to be top of the list for any true superfan. Welcome to Castle Ward, or to what many TV viewers will know as Winterfell. And well, when in Winterfell... Good evening, my lady. <laughs> Where do you hail from? Uh, from London. London. And which house do you represent? Oh, I'm not sure I have a house. House of Larwood. House of Lore, we've mm -hmm. never heard of them. <laughs> Sounds like something that the Night's Watch would have dragged in on their way. <laughs> I believe you're here to learn how to do archery. I am, if you I can teach cohorts, me. I cohorts, so I need people to hunt and to fight. Okay. Are you up to the task? I hope so. I hope so too. <laughs> Otherwise, there is a penalty. Oh, oh a beheading. Well, that seems yeah. measured. Absolutely, because you're absolutely no good to me here at Winterfell if you can't hunt and you can't fight. Well, I'll do my best. Thank you. In the series, no character is safe from a grisly end, so it never hurts to know what you're doing with a bow and arrow. Select your arrow, always by the tip, never by the feathers, and never further down the shaft, okay? Think of it coming out of a quiver. Three fingers on the drawing string, okay? And then draw back so that it brings to your right eye. Loose! All right. I hit the actual thing. <laughs> That'll do to start with your first arrow ever, yes! and you hit a target, Excellent. okay. Archer ready, draw, hold, loose, look at that, yes, well done you, okay. So this place used to be a farm and yet now it's you know, a huge tourist attraction, how did that happen? We are where Game of Thrones started, so it's a perfect place to start your journey to go on and do some of the other sites that are around. Uh, yes, they've gone off to Croatia, yes, they've gone off to Iceland, yes, they've gone off to Morocco and so on. Um, and that's fine, but most of it is shot here. And it's turned into what we now know as screen tourism, something we've never had before. Uh, yes, we have the Giants cause a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and it's beautiful and all that. But people used to go there and there alone, and then they would take off. Now they come to see many other parts of our province here. And we'll be finding out more about these sites later in the programme. But first, we head across the Irish Sea to England's Lake District, where Catmo reports. Here in the UK's biggest national park, in the mountainous, rugged Lake District, 
you'll find the green and beautiful landscapes this country is known for. But there's also something else. Scars to the mountainsides tell a story of a defining industrial era for the country and the communities in this region. At the UK's last working slate mine, travellers can come to walk in the treacherous footsteps miners used to take up the mountain. They call it the Via Ferrata. But first, I wanted to see what life was like for these miners working deep in a network of mountain tunnels before modern machinery transformed the practice of extracting the slate. It's a bit low down here. Wow, look at this. It's absolutely amazing space, isn't it? I can hear my voice echoing off the rocks. How fun. It, it represents a huge area where they found an awful lot of good rock. And it also represents some 11 miles of tunnels and caverns. I can't even imagine how long it would have taken to have carved out a space this huge in here. Oh, it's, it's a huge amount of time. Paint a picture for me of what this would have been like back in its heyday. When was that? <laughs> well, back in its heyday, after the First World War, when the production was getting going again, and it built up to some 2,000 tonnes of roofing slate produced mm. per year. And that would have been, in places like this, uh, lit by early carbide lamps, which was uh, the next generation of lamp after using just candlelight. Uh, we would have the dust off the rock in their lungs and uh, they always had the potential when you're working the rock for it to come down onto your head, which would have been covered in a cloth cap. Back out the mine, it's time to head up to the Via Ferrata. So the old miners route starts way over there and the only way to get there is on this narrow bridge. My mouth's already gone dry. <laughs> And it gets worse. It's me first. Okay, here we go. This is where it gets interesting. It's great, you're doing really well. Okay. How high are we? We are 3,000 foot above sea level, approximately. Okay. We're obviously quite high up from the road, just the fact that the uh, the cars are like micro-machines from up here. Yeah, these cars look <laughs> tiny. Probably isn't the best conversation to be having whilst we go over this. No. <laughs> At over 150 metres, this bridge is the longest of its kind in Britain. And as I creep my way across, I could not be more aware of every remaining step to go. Right. I can do this. I'm doing my best. Ballet feet. Whoop. Oh. Just keep breathing. Okay, right. This was really hard. Ah. Oh gosh. <laughs> With the wind lurching the bridge from side to side, I have to be so careful where I put my feet. Oh, fine. Oh my gosh, this wind. <laughs> okay. Yeah, just waiting for the wind to. Blow past me. <laughs> oh my god, give me a break. Same pass by. If I actually stop and think about it, the view is it's amazing up here, but to be honest, I haven't really been concentrating on the view so much as my feet and my arms so I don't fall into the view. Okay? <laughs> and actually it's really quite long. Now I can appreciate the view. It's so pretty. <laughs> well then. Side ground. I'm done. Safety. <laughs> it would jump for joy, but it's a bit windy still. Well done. Okay. We did it. Well, while Cat catches her breath. We're headed up to the very northern tip of Scotland, where one man has taken on an even bigger challenge.
I've seen the land and, and, and the landscape and I see it completely different. I feel more connection with the UK now uh, as a whole than I ever have in my entire life. Hi, my name is Christian Lewis. And this is my dog Jet and we are walking the entire coastline of the United Kingdom. I started in Swansea. The United Kingdom isn't just one island, there's loads of separate islands off the United King Kingdom. In fact, 700 um, off the west coast of Scotland. So we've tackled those as well. So we are on the northwest coast of Scotland, just about to turn the corner, um, having been on the move now for two years. So I reckon about another year and a half before we finish. Jet and I are actually on the Mollican Tire now, heading our heading. I think people would be very surprised to hear that the, the UK coast um, yeah, this is including the islands, Northern Ireland, um, is surprisingly around 18,000 miles. Now, to put that into perspective, um, if you were to fly around the world as the crow flies, that's around 25,000 miles. Before I started this, I suffered really badly with depression. I had anxiety, um, and this went on for a long, long time. I went for a surf one day, and I remember coming out and just looking down the cliffs and, and, and I honestly just thought to myself, walk home. So I started walking along the coast and I've been going for two years now. I've got a lot to thank this place for. There is no plan. It really is this simple. I keep the sea to my left hand side um, and I know that eventually that's going to take me around to where I need to be. Conjet. I go as far as my legs can take me each day uh, and I camp when I think it's time to camp um, and I repeat that process the next day. I'll show you where I slept last night. I'm not complaining at all. So Jet, um, my dog, I rescued her on the way. Um, she wasn't in the best nick when I first had her. She was very thin, very skinny. But there was an immediate connection between Jet and I. Um, I felt that kind of brokenness in her um, that maybe I had felt before. We, we bonded immediately. Some of the stuff that she tackles on this coast, I, I wouldn't ask another human to do. Um, but we have such complete trust for each other that if I go and do something or I go and climb something, before I know it, she's shooting past me because she knows if I'm doing it, she'll do it. Yeah, I just arrived in Gretna, which means I'm in Scotland. But yeah, I'm stupidly happy. The wonderful thing about the United Kingdom is that every single part of the United Kingdom that you go to, um, there is a change and it's not it's not subtle, it is there in your face. Mother of Zeus. Oh, good afternoon, guys. Um, it's a really wet one today. It's nice to have the Scottish weather back. Oh my goodness! Hailstones and they hurt like hell! Some of my favourite moments on this walk have been when my tent's been getting smashed from side to side and I've peeked out and I've watched the seas and I've watched the waters and, and I see how powerful it is. Oh my word, I feel so old and haggard. Um, yeah, obviously I'm, I'm not feeling well at all, as you know. I started this walk with 10 pounds and, and two days worth of rations. Um, I'd just given up the house, so I, I had nothing really. So, you know, I, I pretty much relied on foraging and all this kind of stuff, but on Anglesey I soon realised that I didn't know enough. So I ended up doing that full 20, 126 miles with nothing to eat. I'm, I've been coming around Anglesey for I don't know, it's like Sunday, Monday. It's, um, it's a cracker, it really is. I'm a bit annoyed with myself that I've smashed it round, but um, I have my reasons. And uh, yeah, that, that was a really big mistake. I lost a lot of weight and I was very ill after that week. So, um, lesson learned. <laughs> Making my way up the West Coast. Um, and then went, went, went. Hey, good afternoon, folks. So look at this, right? I'm on an island on my own. This family have come up and brought me Christmas dinner by boat. I'm going to go over and say hello to them, bear with me. So I have gone from being one of the most isolated people you would ever meet, you know, shutting myself in a bedroom for three weeks, not seeing anybody, scared to go to the shops, to being the most confident, most outgoing, happiest person you'll ever meet. I do think this is a lifestyle now, so this, this will never end for me now. You know, it's a great lifestyle. I don't have TVs or anything, um, but I don't need one, do I? <laughs> Welcome back, and as we continue our look into the far-flung corners of the UK, I'm back 
with the Game of Thrones fans in County Down. It's amazing as we walk all through here how many people are wearing the big capes for Game of Thrones, clearly here because Game of Thrones was filmed here. And it's such a beautiful area. Did you come to this part of the world because of Game of Thrones? Yeah, I did. I mean, Northern Ireland's a fascinating country, lots of history, but I think if not for Game of Thrones, I probably wouldn't have come all this way. <laughs> so really, are you like a, like a big fan? On a scale of one to 10, like, like an 11. <laughs> you know, I'm 24, traveling alone. My father grew up during the Troubles, so he thought I was absolutely insane. Really? Um, but he's seen all my photos and just thinks that it's been a great trip. For three decades up until 1998, Northern Ireland endured a violent and deadly conflict known as the Troubles. Since then, a kind of dark tourism exploring the locations and murals of the conflict has been popular here. But for some local people, there's now a more positive story to tell about what their country has to offer. So here we have um, Summer which is a Bran Stark style wolf. Now you're gonna meet him later on. Uh, this is obviously, he's not a puppy anymore, but he's still just as cute, trust me. Uh, run to the litter. That one's yours, Snow. <laughs> the big draw behind my coach tour were local celebrities. William played a white walker in the program, but it's his two dogs that people come from around the world to meet. Who do we have here? This is Odin and this is Thor. Oh. Summer, Bran Stark, Direwolf, Grey Wind, Rob Stark, Direwolf. Oh, aren't you beautiful? Oh, so lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Should we take them for a walk? Yeah, okay. Do you want to take this one? This sure. It's sort of changed from being just owning a couple of dogs to suddenly you've got a tourism operation now. Well, you know, uh, people just actually started wanting to meet them. They contacted us through social media or whatever, and so we decided that instead of them coming to our house, we had to kind of make it more official. So my brothers and I actually started up our own tour company. So tell me a little bit about what impact Game of Thrones has had on your community. Um, county Down, I think, was one of the least visited tourism-wise uh, counties in Ireland. And so now I think it's one of the highest because of Game of Thrones. Like, you look like a Game of Thrones extra. Do you buy into it? Are you a Game of Thrones junkie? Well, I was actually contracted to keep this long uh, while filming, but uh, <laughs> my whole family have long hair and beards anyway. But yes, um, yeah, I am a massive Game of Thrones fan. <laughs> Well, while I finish my walk with Odin and Thor, we end with Kat, who's getting hands-on at the slate mine. So apparently, the traditional practice of splitting slate has barely changed in generations. In the workshop, they now split 100 tonnes of it a year. Paul here is riving the rock. That's our word for splitting. Okay. And the beauty of, of this rock is that it does split so beautifully into roofing slates. Now, I have an idea. Would you like to have a go yourself? <laughs> sure. You would? Well, I have so, to pay for the slate if I ruin it. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm told it takes a lifetime for rivers to learn the skill. Yeah. About there. But I'm not sure even that would be enough for me. So I just start anywhere in the middle and rather than on the edge. <laughs> you didn't see that. <laughs> Woo! No. You want, you, you want to have it dead uh, okay. straight? Yeah. All right. More? You just want to make a line. So just keep going. It's actually quite tricky keeping this ch chisel straight. Can you hear that change? Can you yeah, feel it? I can yeah. feel it in my hands as yeah. well. Can you hear it? I did it. And there you are, just <gasps> give it a little twist and there you go. Da, 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 da. You've just split a slate beautifully. Split it, slate. it looks absolutely glorious, that. God, I feel like I've done like a little workout. <laughs> Uh, not actually started the miners route, have we? No. <laughs> Back with my guide Jenny, it's time to continue onto the old miners route up the mountain. I can see why you love climbing around here. It's pretty fantastic and it's always changing the environment wherever you go in the Lake District. So yeah. It was changing across that bridge. As I know well. it was. <laughs> so the Via Ferrata, also known as Miners Route, goes all the way up there. 
Is that actually what they did? So this incline that you can see there is basically following the footsteps of the, the miners that they used to take to work. These sort of added bits that we've got on the fell side as well, so that's just all for fun. So, I think I'm ready. Are you? No. <laughs> Should we do this? Yeah, let's do this. <laughs> don't look down. Okay. I don't know if my legs are shaking because I'm cold or because I'm nervous or because they're really exhausted from the bridge still. Just uh, watch that clip there, Kat. Okay. Oh. Things are getting real now. <laughs> While I'm safe and hooked on, I know that one wrong step on these thin metal bars could see me test my harness much more than I'd like. The miners wouldn't have climbed the wall this way. This is just for fun. But I'm told this section does help travellers get a sense of the type of dangerous terrain they faced every day. So you make sure you like leave a bit of space again for your next foot. That's it. And then step up. How do I how, how do I do this next sure. bit? So you can use the rock again if you have okay. to, or you just want a big step over with that right now. Finally, I'm up and onto the miner's footpath. Okay, that's it. So we're just making our way up the part of the incline now. So this is part yeah. of the well-trodden route they used to take. Indeed. Uh, so we're gonna click in Walking the miner's footpath, it's amazing to think what this must have been like for generations of people working this incredible landscape. Okay, it sounds good. And as my time in Northern Ireland comes to a close, I know that it's thanks to amazing people like the ones we've met along the way that so many more hidden places this country has to offer will continue to be revealed. Wow, <laughs> what a view. Look at that, what a reward. Is that Scotland over there? It is, it is Scotland you can see in the distance.